Hallelujah. Hey, Joey, don't go away. You want to tell them what, uh, what happened to you at the Revival Center? Or what happened there from what you could, can recollect? Yes. <laughs> okay, Revival Center Sunday. Uh, let's see. First, let me see if I got this right. Correct me if I'm wrong. There was a, an older couple that, that ended up there from a friend of somebody that's new to the church. She invited them. They came down. Uh, and there was a gentleman that was supposed, a young gentleman that was supposed to meet this guy. And he, he just came in on a bus from Phoenix. And I heard the story later, actually, when we left. But I, I kind of put it all together as, as I left. But he, he was wandering around, supposedly outside. Uh, he didn't know where he was coming to meet this gentleman. And uh, one of our guys down there, Bayardo, one of our brothers, invited him into church. He came into church and, and wind up finding the guy that he was supposed to meet. So the service went on. Uh, pastor asked for prayer in the end. And uh, what happened was is a few people got up and most of the people left. Pastor dismissed the people that needed to go. A few people hung around, and, and I was one of them. I was, I was catching. So this uh, young gentleman came up. He asked for prayer. Uh, he pastor asked him what, what kind of a prayer did he need, or, or what did you know? And he was he was a little uh, apprehensive at, at coming forth and saying what what did he what he wanted. So he just came out and said, uh, there, "There's something about the fireman. Tell me about the fireman, or, or, or the the man on fire, man of fire, the fireman." And pastor just kind of, huh. He thought about it for a brief second, and then Pastor said, okay, I had a vision before church started, and Pastor seen God's arm actually reaching into the fire and pulling up out of the fire, and, and fire was dripping off of God's right arm. And he, he told this guy that, and the, the, the guy immediately connected to the vision, and it was, it was instantaneous. The guy started praising God, and he, I, if I remember correctly, he was, he was, he was uh, very emotional. And uh, Pastor started praying for him, and I was behind him. Barada was next to me. Pastor Sharon was next to uh, Pastor George. And I was directly behind him, and as Pastor started praying for him, his, his back literally heated up to like an oven to where my hands started burning. And I literally had to, I had to pull my hands away. They got so hot. And, you know, I, I kind of rubbed my hands together. I'm like, what's going on here? So I said, okay, well, maybe I, I don't know what's going on. Okay, so I put him back, and, I, and of course, he, he continued praying for him. And, and again, my hands were burning. They were on fire. And I kind of looked at Bardo, and, and I'm like, are, are you feeling that heat? He goes, yeah, I'm feeling it. He was a little bit far, you know, he was a couple feet away, you know, but he still had his hands up, and he felt the heat. And uh, again, my hands started burning so hot that I had to pull him away again. And this continued for several minutes to where my hands were just on fire. I mean, it felt like they were literally on fire. And there was no, there was no flame there. It was the strangest thing, but it was the fire of God. It was, it was the fire of the Holy Spirit. The, the prayer was going into him, through him, or around him, and it was coming right directly to me. And everybody that was beside me and around me and behind me was feeling this. And uh, when the guy finally went out, he went down, and, uh, you know, I caught him, and, you know, I, I, uh, the last thing I touched was his head, and his head was hot, and uh, my fingertips actually got burned. It was strange, laying his head down so his head wouldn't hit the, hit the, hit the ground. And I came up, my, my hands are just on fire, and I'm kind of running around, and I got emotional, and it was like, I hadn't felt anything like that for, uh, you know, I got baptized in the Holy Ghost here uh, right here about four and a half years ago, and I hadn't felt that kind of emotion or, or move of God in such heat and strength and emotion, and I was sweating, and it was, it was, it was all just hitting at me at once, and I just started kind of going around trying to like put my hands out, the fire. It was very strange, and pastor seen me, and he came over and gave me a hug and said, oh, you know, are you okay? And I said, I think so, and I'm just crying, and and sweating, and uh, I, I, just, I was just amazed at the, at the move and the power of God, and God definitely showed up there. And this guy it was strange because when he finally came to, he was 
you know, I, I think the, the spirit of laughter hit him because he was, he was laughing hysterically on the ground. He was rolling around and everybody started praising God and praying in tongues. And, and he's just hysterically rolling around on the ground, just laughing, 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 laughing. And everybody started laughing and it was contagious. And all of a sudden, everybody's laughing, you know, and I'm still running around my hands on fire. I'm like, what is going on here? So I helped him up. And when I helped him up, his hands were ice cold. And I'm like, bro, your hands are ice cold. They feel so good on my hands because my hands are burning right now. I said, did you feel the heat off your back? He said, I didn't feel anything. I'm freezing cold. And his body was cold as ice. It, like, it was like it came out of a freezer. It was so strange. So I wind up uh, you know, talking to him after, and he said uh, somebody prayed for him several weeks ago, and then the same thing kind of happened. He, he came out, and he was cold. And I said, you know, your back's not hot. Your back's not burning because my hands are burning. And uh, he said, no, I don't feel anything. I'm cold. So, uh, you know, again, I shook his hand and he kind of told me the story how he came in from Phoenix on the bus. And then uh, he left. I wound up driving uh, a couple blocks away on the way home. And, and here's Bayardo walking, you know. And uh, I said, Bayardo, where are you going? He says, I'm going towards your house. I said, well, get in. So he got in. I said, bro, my hands are burning. Are your hands still hot? And he goes, yeah, my hands are hot. And he looked at my hands and they, had, they were very, very red. And it looked like they, there was blisters starting on my fingertips. And Byron was seeing it, and he was like, what in the world is going on? So we started talking about it. And I said, what is with that guy? Where did this guy come from? How? And Byron said, I seen him outside wandering around and invited him in the church. And yet his, the guy he was supposed to meet was in the church. So I don't know how that all took place, but I know it was a move of God. Absolutely. It was absolutely amazing. And to this day, three days later, my hands are still hot. They're still hot on the palms of my hand. I could still feel like burns. And it wasn't... It wasn't a burn like I was in trouble, I needed a medical attention. It was just a burn to, to, I think it was a reminder. God kept reminding me all day and the next day, like, this happened. And this happened, and your hands are still on fire, and that's, that's, that's your testimony of it. And I just, wow, I just, yeah, it was amazing. So uh, the move of God happened at the Revival Center, and it, it was amazing, and uh, that was amazing. Uh, I have another brief, quick testimony that I actually forgot about until... Uh, uh, my buddy Clarence, we were in cell group last night, and anybody that knows my buddy Clarence, he's been in and out of a coma for the last two years, and in May, I was, I was, I got the call that said, you know, uh, the doctors are saying they, they've done all they can for him, it's time to go to a hospice and just live his remainder days in, in the hospice, he, he's going to die, is what the doctors were saying, we can't do anything else, he's going to die. And a couple of Christian friends called me that are friends of Clarence's, and they're all Christians. Clarence is a Christian as well. And I'd been praying for him, praying over his bed while he's in the coma, playing guitar for him, and, and just, just praying for this guy for, for two years now. So we, we all ended up going down to his bedside that day, and we held church for hours. We prayed over him. Uh, the Lord told me to throw Bibles on him. Everybody threw their Bibles on top of him, and we prayed. And, it, it, you know, he, he kind of came to, and, you know, he's a little sluggish, and he wasn't thinking right, and he's probably about 80 pounds, and this is a big guy, he's about 200 pounds, and he's probably about 80 or 90 pounds, and he just looked really terrible, and I said, I said, you know, Clarence, this ain't the end. I said, you're going to be a living, walking testimony when God's done with you, and I prophesied that to him in, in his bed while we were praying over him. The Bibles were laid on him, and uh, so the doctor said, well, you know, I told his wife, you better get a hospice. She's like, I'm not getting a hospice. I'm taking him home. The Lord is going to heal him. She stood, ground, she stood her ground and, and in, in her faith and says, I'm taking him home. So I got out of cell group last night, and there's a message from Clarence. And, you know, I seen his number on my caller ID, and I expected, oh, no, you know, what's going on here? And uh, either maybe it was his wife, or I expected Clarence to say, hey, Joey, you know, last, like the last time I seen him, how you doing? Hey, Joey D., how you doing? This is Clarence Harris. What's going on, man? Hey, I'm doing real good. I need you to call me, man. I just want to talk to you. And I'm like, what in the world? I haven't heard that voice in two years like that strong. And I'm like, what is going on? So I immediately pulled over in front of Pastor Lou's house, and I'm like, what is going on? Clarence, how you doing? He's like, I'm doing great, man. I just got done eating like five pieces of chicken, two pieces of fish. He goes, I'm up to about 150 pounds. I'm gaining weight, man. I'm starting to play my drums. I pulled my keyboards out. I'm writing songs, man. I'm doing great. God's the healer. I just, I said, Clarence, like I said, you are going to be a living, walking testimony to people of God's healing power. And God healed him from a coma unto death. This guy was ready to die. And God pulled him out, and he's just his his right his mind is right. He's gaining his weight back. His his strength is there, and it's just awesome. It's just awesome. Praise God. Only God can do that. Amen. Wow, that is awesome. Praise God. 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 Praise God.